uh, we're going to talk about the source of surface tension. Now, the source of surf te surface tension has to do with the fact that molecules interacting at interfaces interact differently from each other than they do with the other inter with the other molecules. So, capillary flow occurs because solid molecules interact with the liquid molecules differently than the liquid molecules interact with each other, and that can cause an attraction essentially between the liquid and the solid molecules. It's stronger than the attraction between the solid molecules, those liquid molecules, and each other or vice versa. Uh, surface tension with, with an air-liquid interface occurs because uh, the water molecules are interacting with each other and they interact differently with each other than they interact with the air molecules. And that can cause also you know, a force differential uh, and, and lead to a, you know, a, a pressure, pressure difference across the surface because there's a force difference across the two sides without that pressure difference. So if you want to calculate the pressure difference across a surface, we're going to imagine a curved surface so this is a curved surface here of an arbitrary curve, curved in both directions. And you can characterize a curve numerically by uh, specifying the amount of the radius of a circle that would have that same amount of curvature in it uh, if it were a complete circle. So this curve, we're defining it by R1, which is the amount of the radius of a circle that would have the same curve as this bit of curve on this side of the surface. And R2 is the radius of a circle that would have uh, this amount of curve. The smaller the the more the curve, the smaller the R will be. So you that so a large R is a small curve, and a small R is a large curve. And then we can calculate the pressure difference across a surface like that using what's called the Young-Laplace equation. This is Mr. Young and Mr. Laplace, not Laplace when he was young. And it's calculated simply by this surface tension, which we know how to look up, uh, divided by times one over R1 plus one over R2. Um, if you have an arbitrarily shaped surface with both curvature in both directions. For a simpler case, we can look at a sphere, which, which works, you know, if we're examining, for instance, bubbles in liquid. So if you have a sphere, then you don't have two radiuses of curvature. You only have one. So for a sphere, R1 equals R2. And therefore, delta P, using that same formula, is just sigma times 2 over R. So that's for spheres. So that's very, very easy to remember and very easy to use. Uh, so let's consider a soap bubble. For a soap bubble, we can calculate how much pressure would be across that interface. But you need to remember that there is um, potentially there are potentially two. Uh, surfaces, uh, one inside and one outside, right? So, because you've got, a, you would have a soap bubble. You would have actually, if you were actually draw it accurately, you would have a liquid to air interface here, and you would have a second liquid to air interface there. So you're actually crossing two interfaces. Uh, so for a soap bubble, um, you would have the delta P is equal to two times sigma times two over the radius of that soap bubble. So that, of course, would just be delta P equals 4 sigma over R. So I say this is uh, in general. Uh, you have this formula here, which you can apply if you're an arbitrary curve. But in many cases, uh, it's really uh, you have spheres like small bubbles. And if you have small bubbles or even large bubbles, uh, you can simplify that formula to simply be this. And then you only have to figure out whether it's something like a soap bubble that has two interfaces or something like an air bubble underwater, which of course would only have one interface. You would simply have the air and then a bunch of water. So you'd have one interface giving you the pressure difference between the water and the inside of that bubble.